Hello friends, this video on magnetic effects of current part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will discuss about electric motor in detail. All of you must be aware of electric motor. I mean you would have at least heard the name electric motor because many of you would have um, pumps in your houses. So you will say that whenever the water is over in your kitchen and bathroom, you say that, okay, switch on the motor. So what is that motor? What is that electric motor? So let us discuss that electric motor in detail. So what is an electric motor? It is a device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So electrical energy into mechanical energy. So till now you might not be very clear with what is a motor. How is it useful? So once I tell you some of the important examples where we use electric motor, things will be clearer to you. For example, look at your washing machine. Have you ever observed what happens? When you plug it on, switch on the washing machine. Click on the start button. What happens? It starts moving. So that motion of the washing machine, what is that? That is mechanical energy, right? Mechanical energy is nothing but kinetic energy plus potential energy. So that movement of the washing machine is mechanical energy. So which energy is getting converted into mechanical energy? You have to first switch it on. So that means your electrical energy is getting converted into mechanical energy. So what is that device which helps us to convert the electrical energy to mechanical energy? That is nothing but the electric motor. Similarly, look at the fans which you have at your home. You switch it on and it starts moving. So there also the electrical energy is getting converted to mechanical energy. And it is because of the motion of the blades of the fan that you are able to get air. Right? Similarly, your mixer grinder. You switch it on, it starts moving. So all these things, there is an electric motor which is present inside all these devices which helps to convert the electrical energy into mechanical energy. So now we will study how does an electric motor function. So before knowing the working of the electric motor, let us look at the construction of the electric motor. What does it consist of? It consists of a rectangular coil of insulated copper. So this is your rectangular coil. It has magnet poles, this north and south pole, so that a magnetic field can be created between the poles. Then you have something called as split rings. Here you see there are two half rings, half, I mean semicircular structure. These half rings are known as the split rings. You have axle, axle is nothing but this axis, this rod like structure which is there, that is known as the axle. There are a pair of brushes, this X and Y which you see, some cubical structure, they are the brushes. So these brushes are attached to the outside of the split rings. Now if you look at these split rings, the inside of the split rings are insulated and they are attached to the axle. So the inside portion of the split rings that is insulated, that means that it will not be conducting and it is attached to this axle. That means as the axle moves, the inside of the split ring will also move and the outside of the split ring is attached to the brushes which are conducting. These brushes are conducting, right? And then you have a source battery. Source battery, why do you have a source battery? So that when you... I mean, when you close this key or when you switch it on, a current flows through this circuit. So when the current flows through the circuit, the brush also, the brushes which are present on either ends, they also conduct the current, right? So this is the construction. This is the basic construction of the electric motor. So now we will see how does it function. Now in, in, in the commercial motors which, which we see, this is a basic electric motor. Now in mo the motors which are used for commercial purposes, there instead of these normal magnets, you have electromagnets because their magnetic strength is little more. There we also have more turns of conducting wire on the coil. coil. Here this coil is there, right? So right now we are considering that it is a single coil of copper. But in com for commercial purposes, we, we increase the number of turns on this coil. Why do we increase the number of turns? Because as the number of turns increases, the magnetic field increases. Therefore, the current produced will also increase. So, we increase the number of turns there. So, of the iron core on which the coil is wound. So, I mean the coil is not used alone. A soft iron core is placed over which that coil is wound. So, that becomes a, a kind of 
electromagnet as i had showed you before also if you co if you uh, wind a coil over a soft iron core you end up forming a solenoid solenoid with a core of with a soft iron core so now magnetic field inside the solenoid is very strong right so in order to increase the amount of current or in order to increase the strength of the magnetic field these are some of the improvements over the basic construction of electric motor when it is used for commercial purposes right so right now let us concentrate on the basic electric motor so basic electric motor consists of this rectangular coil and also this coil is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field between the poles now this is the north and this is the south so the magnetic field is in this direction now this coil is placed in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field right what else is present are the split rings inside of which is insulated and connected to the axle outside is connected to the conducting brushes which are in turn connected to a source battery so i hope the construction is now clear so let us now look at the working of the electric motor how does it actually work let us suppose i switch it on that means this key is closed so what will happen current will flow through this circuit so the current will flow like this so it is brushes are conducting so current will flow through this way this way it will come back like this and finally it will come back like this so this is how the current will flow in the circuit now let us apply fleming's law so this is the current produced due to magnetic field i mean here you have a magnetic field Mag the direction of magnetic field is in this represents the direction of magnetic field so the magnetic field and the current are perpendicular to each other so now since we you have placed now you only concentrate on ab so if you look at ab what is it ab is a current carrying conductor so when you place a current carrying conductor in magnetic field what happens it experiences a force that is what we studied in the last few slides right now let us try to find out the direction of the force that will be experienced by ab so how will we find the direction of force by using fleming's left hand rule so we will apply fleming's left hand rule on ab so along this ab so try to apply the rule what is the direction of magnetic field it is from north to south so you orient your middle finger horizontally the direction of current is along ab so you orient your middle finger in that direction so where do you see is your thumb pointing to the thumb is pointing in the downward direction therefore the force is in the downward direction now similarly apply fleming's left hand rule along the arm cd in along arm cd also you have a current carrying conductor where the current is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field but in this case the direction of current is reversed now we know that we saw in our previous slides that when the direction of current gets reversed provided the direction of magnetic field remains the same the direction of force is also reversed however you can apply fleming's left hand rule along this side also and you see that the force is in the upward direction so that means there is a force acting on ab which tries to push it down that means the motion will take place in the downward direction and there is a force which is acting here which tries to pull it up so what does that mean these two forces together this will start coming up this will start going down that means this coil will start moving in the anti clockwise direction so it will start rotating in the anti clockwise direction now once it starts rotating so this is my first scenario where this is pushed down and this is pushed up right now what happens when it moves half a rotation so this was the first scenario where this was my coil this was a b c and d now when it has rotated half way now when the coil is rotating the axle is also rotating right so as a result the split rings are also rotating however the brushes are fixed on their positions right so after half a rotation is completed what will happen what will be the position of the coil the position of the coil would be somewhat like this after half a rotation this ab will move like this and it will reach here 
this CD will move like this and it will come here. So this will be CD and this will become AB. And what will be the position of the brushes? The brushes are still will be X and Y. But now the split rings would have rotated. The split ring Q would have come here and P would have gone here. Right? So this would be the changes after half a rotation is completed. So after this rotation, what will happen? Now again, if you look, apply Fleming's left hand rule on this direction as well as on, on along CD as well as along AB, what do you see? The, now applying Fleming's left hand rule, this arm CD, earlier CD was moving upwards. But now if you see, CD will start moving downwards because the force acting on this side will be downwards because current is flowing in the upward direction. Magnetic field is in this direction. So what will be the direction of force? The direction of force will be in the downward direction. So now along CD, the force will be in the downward direction and along AB, the force will be in the upward direction. So that means this will start moving down and this will start moving up. Right? So that means what will be the net motion? This will move up, this will move down. That is anti-clockwise direction. So what do we see? Basically, the coil will keep on moving in the anti-clockwise direction. Because again, once the half rotation is over, again AB will come. Again, this scenario will come back. That is AB will come back on this side and CD will go back on this side. So that means... This electrical energy which is produced by the source battery, that is this current which is produced by the source battery is actually helping to us to rotate this coil. So that means the electrical energy is getting converted into mechanical energy. Had this been possible if there were no magnetic field present? No, because it is because of the presence of magnetic field that a force is being exerted on the arms of the coil. Right? So this is how an electric motor functions. So I, I think it is pretty simple, right? Th this is what we have studied in our last few slides and it is a direct application of that. So this is how electrical energy gets converted into mechanical energy. So in all the examples which I quoted before, like whether it is an electric fan or it is your washing machine or a mixer grinder, everywhere inside the app, uh, uh, device, you have a small electric motor which is continuously running or working in this fashion to convert the electrical energy into a mechanical energy. Right now, one important thing to be noted here is what is the significance of the split rings? The split rings actually act as a commutator. What is a commutator? Commutator is a device that reverses the direction of current because you would have seen in the previous slide that what happened after half a rotation. After half a rotation, the direction of current reversed because earlier the direction of current along CD was in this direction. Now the direction of current in CD is along this direction. Why did this happen? This happened because of the split rings. Because the split rings and the brushes are connected in such a fashion that the split rings will rotate along with the rotation of the coil but the brushes will remain fixed. As a result of that, what happened? CD came on this side and AB went on that side. However, the current from the battery was still coming from the same direction. So as a result, the current on each of the arms got reversed. So any device which reverses the direction of current is known as a commutator and split rings here acts as a commutator. And what was the significance of reversal of current? It is because of the reversal of current that there was a continuous rotation of the coil. Because let us assume that if this brushes were not fixed. In that case, the brushes will also rotate along with the rotation of the coil, right? So if the split rings, if the split rings were not there, if, not, if they were not present there, so in that case, what will happen? This will rotate, it, this will rotate half a rotation and then again it will get rotated in the opposite direction. So that means the complete rotation would have not been possible. It would have rotated like this, come back like this, again gone like this, again come back like this. So it would have not enabled a complete rotation of the coil. So the complete rotation is possible because of the reversal of current and reversal of current is possible because of the split rings. So split, split rings plays a very important role in the working of electric motors. So now there is a small animation which actually shows you the functioning of the electric motor. So this is how it will keep rotating.
Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.